This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to walk through the complete installation of WooCommerce in about 30 minutes or so. I'm going to show you how to set up a complete store. So, um, what I'd like to do for the session, if we can just hold, we'll hold all the questions till the end because we've got a lot to cover in a very short span of time. So, if you want to tweet during the presentation, um, my colleague Jim Dudley up here in the front, uh, you can use the hashtag WCBOS Woo. Uh, we'll collect all your questions during the actual session, and then we'll just try and hammer through as much as we can at the end. Um, and then if we go over, we'll be around afterwards to answer any extra questions. So let's get to it. A uh, couple of quick questions to start. Uh, how many of you are currently managing an online store of some sort? You. Okay. And how many of you are managing a store that's running WordPress? Same. Okay. Good. Um, while you're here, uh, you probably aren't a developer. Uh, you want to know how to set up WooCommerce or any kind of e-commerce installation for your site. Uh, you want to learn something new about how to configure your shop, how to work with the tools. Um, like I said, we're going to set up the complete shop in a totally raw base install of WordPress 2013. So you'll be able to see exactly what out of the box uh, a product looks like, a shop page looks like, and what you're able to do with that. Um, um, I work for First Tracks. I'm a partner and the interactive media director for our organization. Uh, we've been in business for about five years. We do a lot of custom uh, WordPress development uh, for businesses in all different industries and different sizes of companies, and we really enjoy the work that we do, and we're very passionate about uh, maintaining the integrity of the core of WordPress and building really nice, smooth, uh, fun, interactive experiences for the people that we work for. Um, WooCommerce. So why WooCommerce? Um, there are a bunch of other options out there that you could choose from to do your online store in WordPress. Uh, we've tried pretty much all of them, and we don't like them because they're clunky, they have bad database table structure, they're slow, they have very uh, customized interfaces that don't adhere to the core principles of WordPress, and again, it's just something that we're very uh, intent about staying true to in the work that we do. So. Uh, WooCommerce came along about two years ago. Um, it's been blowing up ever since it hit the streets. Um, it's been downloaded almost 1.7 million times in the two years that it's been around. Um, it's got a massive extension following already in the two years that it's been available. On Woo, Woo themes alone, where you can download this, and it's free by the way, the actual core of WooCommerce, you can get it for nothing. Um, there's 210 extensions already. That, are a variety of payment gateways, uh, table rate shipping, um, social media integration, uh, you know, pretty much anything you can think of, people have written an extension for it. And if they haven't, the developer community, which we are also a part of with Blue Themes, um, is actively working to continue to extend and add new features to the platform. Um, there's also uh, extensive extension, that sounds like a little bit of an uh, oxymoron there, but. Um, CodeCanyon.net, there's also a humongous uh, repository of extensions there. I will say that you need to be a little bit more careful with those because they aren't officially sanctioned by Woo Themes and the, the code structures that they have available for their system. So to be a little bit more cautious with those. But the, for the most part, they're pretty good. Um, so let's get to it. So the first thing that we're going to need to have is a website in running in WordPress. So uh, I'm not going to actually like install the, the website, but you know if you go to GoDaddy or HostGator or Bluehost or WP Engine or whoever, um, they always have one-click installs, build up your website, have your database ready to go, we're going to jump into the admin and we're going to start putting in the necessary pieces to put our shop online. Um, the base plugins that I'm going to run for the install today, the only three things that I, you know, uh, one of which is a core, two of which are core plugins that I put into every WordPress site that we do because they're just awesome and they give you tons and tons of features and flexibility. Um, and WooCommerce, obviously, is the, the main uh, necessary item that we have to have here. So I'm going to flip over. And this is, the, you know, this is the raw install of 2013. We've all seen this before. And this is the back end. And I'm going to go to Plugins and Install. And do. <coughs> if I'm a little bit slower with the files, you got to bear with me because I'm not using my computer right now. So. Okay. so 
okay, installable commerce. Uh, Are you serious? Uh, <laughs> it'd be 31 minutes. No, this is local. We're doing this local. Jim, what do we do with your computer? Hold on one second. Yeah. That didn't happen on my computer in 32 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to just drop them in there. This is just like doing a real website park. You can <laughs> run into issues and stuff's going to come up. So if you, if you see that message, it means that your PHP memory upload limit is too low. And it's not going to allow you to force in a file that's larger than X amount of uh, <coughs> megabytes. Um, most shared hosting, you wouldn't run into that type of issue. And um, we had tested this. I don't know, four or five times on my local computer, but it turns out it wasn't going to work with the setup here. Yay! Success! <laughs> That's how fast and agile we are when we do our website support at our, at our business. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so WooCommerce uh, successfully loaded up. I'm going to activate it. <clears throat> Another sip of coffee after that one. <laughs> Come on. This is local. It should be quicker than this. OK, so uh, WooCommerce active. Uh, you see this big welcome message when it comes in. Uh, you're going to want to say, yes, please install my WooCommerce pages. And what we'll see in a couple of minutes the details of what all those are. But basically, that's like my account, my orders, card, shop, you know, all that stuff. WooCommerce just drops it all in there and organizes it for you. And then it gives you, you know, a big welcome message like WordPress does when you install your core. Um, the other plugins I'm going to install. Uh, you know what? I'm going to skip over those. The other two plugins, just because we had to waste some time there. The other two plugins I was going to install is WordPress SEO by Yoast. Absolute must for anybody who's running any websites online to print by numbers, search engine optimization. And the other one was WooDojo. Uh, WooDojo is a plugin also developed by uh, WooThemes that provides you with simple, um, like if your site was going to be down for a little bit, so you do maintenance. It's a simple like maintenance plugin. Allows you to create custom sidebars, gives you uh, widgets for feeding tweets into your sidebars and stuff like that. And it's, again, yeah, that's all free as well. Um, the flexibility primarily, the main thing we use Mudojo for is the sidebar customization. It is stupid simple to use, and it's the best one that we've found to date, as opposed to like dynamic widgets or, um, uh, I don't know, if I can't think of the other one off the top of my head that we used to use. But uh, suffice to say, we're going to move on to. All right, so we install our plugins. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get into the settings of WooCommerce and we're going to configure everything for our, our base of our shop. So, back to WooCommerce and we're going to go into, so you'll see we have two new menu items here. One's products. All your products are run as custom post types, which again, very, very good for the WordPress core, and that's how you sh all that stuff should be run. Um, and then WooCommerce is where all the settings of your, your shop is. So we're going to go into settings under WooCommerce. <clears throat> and this is a little bit more crunched because it's on a more compressed screen, but these are just all tabs that are going to allow us to flip between the uh, various sections that we need to work with. So on the general tab, the very first one we get into, uh, there's only a handful of things on here that you actually have to configure. One is, well, what country are we going to sell our products in? Or where, where are we located? That's the United States, and we are in Massachusetts. There we go. Uh, and I'm not going to sell in pounds sterling. I'm going to use US dollars. And I'm going to sell my products all over the world because they're so fantastic. Um, and then a little bit further down, um, none of this stuff has to be unchecked. Um, and then 
You have some customization options. Again, the defaults that are in here, totally fine to start out with, unless you wanted to do seamless transactions with a payment processor like Stripe or Authorize.net. Um, you would need to force SSL on your checkout. You'd need a secure server certificate. We don't have time to do that today, so we're going to skip it. But um, that's where that <laughs> option is. Uh, styles and scripts. This is where if you wanted to customize button colors, uh, backgrounds, you know, uh, all the shading and stuff that happens in the actual store, you'll see when we get our product up there. Um, it has a really nice point and click color selector for everything. It's very user friendly. Quick question on that. I see a lot of themes that say they're compatible with it. Will they auto-adjust those colors to make sure they fit the No, it'll, it'll, unless you can uncheck the WooCommerce CSS options, and then you can use all the CSS that's contained in the plugin to hook off and write your own stuff. Um, I find it's actually a little bit easier to leave that on and then just override the, the minor items that you want, because it's, it's actually very efficient how they put it all together. Um, and that's all we have to do on general settings. So we have to make sure that we click Save. Mm -hmm bottom every time, otherwise not going to stick. Uh, and next we're going to move on to the catalog. On the catalog page, uh, we need to look, I'm going to show you some drop down options for how you can format your catalog pages. Um, you need to set your, your product data in terms of what units your products are going to be um, fed by in terms of their dimensions um, and what your pricing and image options are. So you have options for your, your uh, product pages. Uh, there's a default sort that comes with them. You can tell it, you know, just you want it to be most recent, you want it to be most popular, you know, it's totally up to you. Um, how you want your sh shop page to display, whether you want it to be just your products, most recent to least, um, show your categories so people can kind of drill into your shop and say, well, I want to look at all your hats versus all your, your shoes versus all your jackets. Um, we're going to leave everything default for now. It's just stuff that you can tinker around with after you've got everything else set up. Um, because we're based in the United States, we're not using metric measurements, so we're going to change this to pounds and inches. Um, if you wanted to uh, disable ratings on your products, this is where you would do that. You just uncheck that, and it totally kills the reviews tab uh, inside the shop. Um, if you want to change how your actual monetary currency displays in your shop, this is where you would do that. Um, it's good out of the box as far as I'm concerned. And if you want to tinker around with what your shop uh, cropping options are for your actual products, this is where you would override that uh, within the system. But they're all good by me, so we're going to move on to the next tab. And then we're going to look at the Pages tab and the Inventory tab next. Um, pages, uh, what, what I mentioned in the beginning, we pushed that purple button and it created all those pages that make up our shop. This is where you can, if you for some reason wanted to change what page was the cart page, which I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but you know, to each his own, um, this is where you would go and select another page. But if you did that, you'd have to make sure that you went in and like moved the short code that actually references the cart for the shop. So. Um, by and large, I just tell people to stay away from this and don't touch it because it could break a lot of stuff. Um, so there's really nothing to change here, actually. Uh, the inventory tab, uh, when you're setting up your store, if you're selling, you know, shirts or hats or whatever, um, are you going to be running stock management out of your site? Do you need to have notifications if stuff's going to run low? Who's going to get that notification? When do you want to receive that notification? Um, that's where you set all of those parameters here. So what's your low, low stock threshold um, and what's your out of stock threshold? Um, and do you want to enable, um, do you want to hide stuff that's out of stock from the shop? Do you want to allow back orders, that kind of stuff? Um, that's what's established on the inventory tab. But defaults are good for me here. I'm going to move on. Uh, next thing we need to do is consider our tax of what we're going to be selling. So because we're selling from Massachusetts, we have tax. So we are going to enable tax calculations. And you're going to calculate based on the shipping address. And the, the tax is, is based on the cart, not uh, the shipping. So we're going to save that adjustment. 
And then there's one, this one, this tab is a little different than the other ones where there's additional um, <coughs> layers to this segment. So we need to go into our standard uh, tax options and we have to actually tell the system, you know, what is the tax for your sales for your store. So, uh, because I have it right here. Country is U.S. State is M.A. Not M.A. Uh, we're going to leave a star in place on the zip postcode um, because that will include all zip codes in the state. And we're going to do the same thing on cities because that will include all cities in the state. Um, drop ship from the manufacturer. Uh, where are they? Um, hopefully somewhere in the well. They might not even be in the U.S. Just different locations. Like, I wouldn't have any inventory myself. Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, as long as you were maintaining the stock, you know, levels for what, wherever the, the manufacturer was through your, your shop, you know, you'd have to communicate that with them and adjust that in your products. That would work. Um, uh, the rate is 6%. <laughs> That's a lot. No. 6.25? Yeah. I don't know. I'm from New Hampshire. We don't have it. Tax name is just. Tax free or die. Yeah. And we're just going to save our changes like that. Um, the next part we're going to configure is the shipping tab. So how do we want to deliver our products? What do we, how do we want to make it available for people to choose the delivery of our products? Um, for our example today, uh, we're going to keep this pretty straightforward. But there are there are innumerable amount of, like I said, extensions for this product. So if you wanted to create, for instance, a whole table matrix of, you know, if it's two products, you know, it's X amount of dollars, or if it's six products, it's X amount of dollars. You can do that versus auto calculations with USPS, FedEx, UPS. Just requires you to have accounts with those providers and you plug in all of your API information in a nice, neat interface that gets added to this sub-menu right here under the uh, uh, shipping section. So you, if you added the U UPS extension, you just get another link that says UPS and then you would fill in all of your account information. And then that would add that auto calculation feature to the card. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we need to enable what shipping options we want to have. So I'm going to go with a flat rate shipping option. And the cost per order is just going to be $10. I'm going to save my changes. And then I'm also going to offer free shipping. Now, uh, what's really nice about how this works is, is that I can put in a, a, a modifier to say, I only want to offer uh, free shipping if a minimum order amount of $50 is achieved. Because obviously, if we didn't do that, who would pay for shipping? I wouldn't pay for shipping. Um, and that's all we have to do for our shipping configuration. You can create classes. So you can create multiple tax classes that get applied within the product itself. So the system will know if I'm buying one thing versus another, it'll apply the tax differently. Um, I'm just doing a basic one that's going to kind of cover everything for this example. Um, so the last three tabs we're going to run through is payment gateways, emails, and integrations. Um, sounds a little complicated, but it really isn't. Um, 
The payment gateways, uh, this is just like similar in the way to shipping options. Um, we have all of these additional layers here that we need to go through to decide which things are going to be actually active. The interface in uh, WooCommerce, the things with purple check marks are the things that are on um, for your actual checkout. So the only two things I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you today is PayPal and I'm going to do check payments so I can actually process the transaction and not actually pay anyone. Um, I don't, we tried to run the PayPal for the local install and it wouldn't work, but uh, I'm going to show you where the settings are to, to connect all that together. So we don't want to do direct bank transfer, so I'm going to go to the BACS and I'm just going to turn that off and save. And then I'm going to go to check and that's enabled. And you can rename like whatever the payment method is too, you can call it whatever you want. It's up to you, but check payment works for me. I don't think I can get Go away. There it goes. <laughs> um, PayPal settings. So this is just PayPal standard. Um, all you have to do is put in your email address. It's usually the same exact thing. And you can give it a little bit of an invoice prefix too if you want to do like WC um, store. So that you know in your, because if you're using your, your PayPal standard account and you're processing stuff from other venues where you had like buy now buttons on another website, you would know in your, your, your list like, oh, these are all things that came from my WooCommerce store. Um, and that's all you have to set up. We're going to uncheck the PayPal sandbox because I'm not going to set up the developer. Today. But you can set up a developer account with PayPal, check that off, and then you can run complete test transactions without actually being charged with your credit card, which is handy uh, from time to time. Um, all right, so emails and integrations are the last two tabs that we need to take a look at. Um, the emails configuration for WooCommerce is one of the best I've ever seen, where there's all these different customer interaction points that when you process an order, the system, you know, sends out, like, here's a new order. So you get an email that says somebody bought something from you. Um, you know, you can have a processing order where the customer gets notified, like, this is going through and we'll notify you as soon as everything is complete. Every single one of those emails, you can customize the look and feel of them directly through this interface here. So if you have a header image that you want to put on the email, you can just put in the URL in this field here and it'll drop that at the top of your email. And then same kind of idea that we saw with the button and the CSS configuration for the plugin on the general tab. You can just pick the colors that are going to match the brand of your shop right here in the, uh, the general settings tab. So the extension of that reach when you process the transaction, it's you know, very seamless with, can be very seamless with the branding of your actual shop, which is a nice, a nice feature of this that I haven't seen in a lot of the other programs. Um, the last tab that we're going to look at Integration, the only thing you really need to do here that I highly recommend that you don't forget to do is putting in your Google Analytics ID. And just by dropping that in there, you will then start to collect all your transaction data in your Google Analytics account. So average orders, orders per day, total uh, amount you know, spent, and then also all the navigational stuff that goes with that. So you know, cart abandonment, you know, where did they come from before they actually purchased? It's all extremely useful data, you know, for you to continue to evolve and adjust how your, your shop is put together. So um, that's it. That is all the configuration you have to do for your basic shop. So now what we need is a product to sell. So I'm going to go over to products. I'm going to add a product. <coughs> I'm gonna, we're gonna sell a hat, and it's gonna be awesome. So, I've uh, pre-written. Where's the mouse? There it is. So we have. There's a couple different pieces of the actual product entry that I want to run through here. Um, oh, because this is all squished, it's all gonna be in one big column. That's okay. Um, the main block at the top. So the title is just the title of your product. Um, if we had adjusted permalinks on the install. It wouldn't be this awful 
double ego thing, that would already be taken care of ahead of time. But it would change the slug of whatever the product is to be the name that you give it in the title. Um, the main block at the top here, this is your long description of your product. And you'll see the difference when we actually look at the product on the front end of the site. So I'm going to copy and paste. So here's our long description. Um, we need to add a category because there are no categories for our store. So just like adding a category to your blog, same exact interface, we're just going to say hats. And if you wanted to tag your product, you could do that too, like winter, you know, in hats, so that there would be some way to classify all your winter hats. Um, the featured image is the main product image that shows up on the product page, so I'm going to set that. Question? Yeah. Is there a um, recommended image size for that? For the, the main product image? When you upload it. Um, that was set back in the uh, uh, catalog options tab, all the measurements at the bottom. It was for your shop, the main catalog, and then the product page. Um, I usually go with something out of the box, uh, something that's, I would say, like 540 to 600, because it'll scale it. Woo is really good with their, their image options, where they'll auto scale down. Um, if you're staying around 600 pixels, you'll be assured that the responsive stuff, if you get into a tablet and it goes a little bit wider in portrait, they'll still be able to support the resolution of where the product is that you're putting in. So. Product ready to go. I'm going to put in some alt text because that's just good practice. That's, that's terrible alt text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It had hats in it though. That was <laughs> all right. So that's the easy stuff. Um, the last major part. You, know, you don't have to worry about custom fields. This is just waste of space. Um, we have all of the product data down here at the bottom. So uh, this is just a straight ahead, simple product. Um, we're going to give it a skew, something you know, useful. Uh, call it uh, FTM H2013. Uh, regular price. I think that hat looks like it's worth like 20 bucks, right? It's a pretty cool looking hat. Um, but. Christmas is coming, and I'm going to run a sale for this hat starting on December 1st, and I'm going to offer it for the low, low price of $10. But now I have to schedule the sale to run December 1st through December 31st. Um, tax status and class stay the same. Uh, we're going to work our way through. We are going to manage our stock. I'm going to, I have 25 of these bad boys to get rid of. Um, I'm going to say in stock, and I am going to allow back orders, because I'm assuming that with this sale, I'm going to blow through those in like two weeks. So <laughs> I'm going to make sure I get, get as many as I can on the books. And then we're going to move to wait. Now, because we're doing flat rate shipping or free shipping, the actual dimensions of the product don't really matter at this point. But I highly recommend, when you, if you're just getting into this and you're just starting to, to start out and that's kind of how you're doing your shipping, get in the habit of always putting in your dimensions if you have them available. Because if you decide down the road that you want to go to an auto calculation setup, you would have to go back and then re-put in all the dimensions of all your products to make it work. Um, that's how USPS and UPS and FedEx figure out what goes into what box and how much it can ship it for. Well, you, you can preset, again, it's a whole other, we could spend like half an hour on just shipping configuration for those other stuff, other things, where you can specify what boxes you have available. But for the system to determine like how many things are going to fit into a particular box and what that's going to cost to ship, needs to know what the dimensions are of those things. So just, I just highly recommend that you get in the habit of just putting in the dimensions if you have them available to you, even if you don't need them necessarily. Um, so weight, it weighs one pound, length six inches by eight inches by 11 inches. 
It's a tall hat. Um, no shipping class, because we didn't send any of those up. Um, the linking tab for WooCommerce is actually a really powerful tool. So think about it this way. If you've got a, a really full catalog of apparel, and I've got my beanie, and I also have like gloves, and a pair of pants, and long underwear that would go with that, um, if it's already in the catalog, you can just click and start to type the products that you want to have recommended in association with this particular product. So when I'm looking at the beanie, underneath it, it'll be, you might also want to buy gloves and long underwear and shoes. Um, out of the box, by default, what WooCommerce will do is it'll look at the category that you're um, placing your product in, and it'll list other stuff that exists in that category. But the upsells and the cross-sells is a way for you as the marketer to say, I want to guide my customers into these particular places as opposed to just keeping them in the same vertical of that category. Um, what's the difference between two? Hmm? What's the difference between those two? Uh, cr well, cross sells, you bridge across, you can bridge across anything, and it just depends upon how you want to, you want to, you know, customize your, your marketing approach for that particular grouping of, you know, your product data. It, they both pull from the entire database, and they get li listed in different rows of display on the actual product level. So you can have quite a bit of other additional recommendation of other ways that you want to send people when they're shopping in your store. Um, and it also goes into widgets as well. There's other widgets that come with WooCommerce that you can drop in your sidebar that will show recommended and linked products as well that will change based on what you're looking at inside the catalog, which is really powerful stuff too. Is that? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we don't need to do, oh, attributes, I just wanted to quickly do this, we're going to, attributes are just, you know, what, what, how, what is the product available as, so for a hat, we could do colors, and I love how easy this is to do, so I can say yellow, and then you separate the, the options with a pipe character, so you say yellow, red, gray, black, and then I can also add another, and call it sizes. <coughs> Small. I can't say. No, well this is just for display purposes. What you're talking about is variations of products, so you can take it a step further and you can turn these attributes into variations, which we don't have time to do today, but then you would put in stock amounts and say, I've got six red hats and eight yellow hats and this many blue hats, and then when they choose to select their product, they put in all of those options and then it extracts the stock from their inventory. Um, it, and you can also uh, manage these globally, so you can have an attribute grouping. Instead of hand typing it like this every time, you can actually pick them out of the database so you can reuse them for later use. So if you had just one assortment, colors is one thing, and you had all the various colors available to it, you could apply that to any other product, whether it was a hat or shoes or a shirt or whatever, which is a great, efficient, global way to manage all of those, those various attribute factors that you shop. For this simple example, this is going to run with today. I'm going to save that. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. Just that. That would be so I checked visible on the product page, so on the attributes tab it's just going to show that stuff in a, in a table. One second, we're almost there. Yeah, let's speed up. Right. Short description. And then the short description at the bottom here, all that is is the, uh, the snippet that appears right next to the product in its image. And we're going to save this and you're going to see everything that I'm trying to describe to you. Publish. So we just set up our product. And now if we refresh the front end, because we haven't set up any menus, you'll see all the account WooCommerce pages have populated themselves automatically in the menu. 
So now I can go to shop. And you can see there's my beanie that appeared. And, and this would just, because I didn't change the catalog settings, it's just going to keep adding products here, ordered by date. Um, and then I can uh, go in and look at the details of that. And there's my beanie. And this is the short description and the title. And then your long description appears in the tabs, uh, additional information, this is where the attributes show up. And then if I want to set reviews, this is that toggle. If I wanted to turn it off, that whole tab would disappear. But if you want to submit a review for the product, that's just a pop-up. I can rate it. And that gets sent in as a comment. You have to approve it before it shows up on your product. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really slick and nice how this all kind of fits together. Um, so now I'm going to add it to my cart. As fast as I can. All right, so I'm going to view my cart. Is there anything that's in there? Um, I don't have an option for free shipping here because I haven't spent $50. And I'm going to go. I'm proceed to check out. And this is the simple checkout page. Um, and you know, you fill this out, process the order. Uh, where I want to, did this show up or not? No, it's just a mess. All right. Um, let me just fill this out really quick so I can show you the orders. I like the drop downs for these two where they have the quick searches. Oops. Really nice. Check. Place. Okay. <clears throat> That's gonna think. And as soon as you put it in your hand, then the tax disappeared. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, and now, if we go back here to the back end. There's my order. So uh, WooCommerce is really nice, too, about how the um, back-end order management works, where you have quick buttons to show you status. You can complete the order just by clicking this button here. You can view the details of it. Gives you a complete readout. Allows you to, to um, change the status of this from directly in the admin. All that information is exportable. And the other part that we're not going to get to spend a ton of time on, because I know we're out, um, is the reporting dashboard for WooCommerce is second to none, in my opinion. There's, you know, if I could have gotten our other sites to load. If you want to go to a full example of a, a shop that we've built recently, uh, curlygirldesign.com. Uh, it's a, a, a shop down in uh, uh, Newton, Massachusetts. Uh, we recently uh, migrated them from WP Commerce. They have about a thousand SKUs. Uh, in their shop, and uh, that's a really, you know, this is as basic as it gets. This is as raw as WooCommerce is right out of the box, but it adapts to responsive layouts. It's completely fluid. It's really light. It's quick. The Curly Girls site coming out of uh, WP e-commerce, they got maybe 50% gain in overall processing speed just from changing the platform with no caching and no other sort of um, pre-build of their website at all. It's just because it's WooCommerce and their average orders, everything across the board. There's a post on our, our website um, at the very, if you scroll all the way to the bottom to our website, there's a blog post that I actually just wrote um, and I have a snapshot of their analytics from their first month. Everything is up an average of 25% across the board. Traffic, average stay, um, amount of pages viewed, uh, average order, um, total sales. I mean, it's just insane how Making that more efficient and removing a step out of the cart process completely transformed how they were able to sell more and be more efficient and manage their stock and create less manual labor work of trying to finagle all the moving parts together and concentrate more on creating deals and coupons and specials and pushing those out to their consumer base and, and helping them to make more money on the bottom line. So um, I know I didn't use my, uh, my PowerPoint <laughs> hardly at all. We were just... The, uh, the details here, so we're just going to skip all these slides. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I know I kind of blew through that really quick. Um,
I hope you found this interesting and useful. And if you have any other questions, I know we're out of time. I'm going to hang around. And